So I just got back from my local FFL, uh, picking up a new firearm. This guy showed up from Brownells at my uh, local FFL over the weekend, and I'm just now getting around to picking it up. So this is a project that I've been wanting to work on for uh, some time now, probably a couple years, and kind of just now getting around to it. So as you can tell, uh, it is a Ruger box. So this guy is Ruger related, and some of you may already know what that is just from that box. But anyway, let me roll this guy in here. Um, move this camera down. So the, don't mind the uh, my Odules any beer cans up there. Those are uh, going to be targets that uh, directly re relate with this as well. So if you can't already tell, this is a Ruger 1022 takedown. Uh, this guy is uh, the gray case. So I, I I didn't know what color case this particular model was going to come with. So um, case is awesome. I love it. This thing is cool. It's nice and small and compact. The only thing I don't like is I wish I almost wish it didn't have the Molly. Uh, and the Ruger logo. So if it didn't have any of that stuff, or it was a little more subdued, maybe you'd be have like a pretty, uh, pretty indiscreet case. But um, for me personally, these two things kind of give it away that it that it's gun related, but not a huge deal. So anyway, 1022. As you can see by the title, this is going to be my little survival rifle project that I'm starting. So I've had a 1022 for oh gosh uh, it's my first first firearm I ever bought so it was it's been like 12 years now uh, and I put I don't know how many thousands and thousands of rounds through that that 1022 I have but um the thing's a tank it runs great I'm excited to see how the the newer slightly updated uh version of the 1022 does and I'm excited to start this this survival survival rifle project so this project is something like I said I've wanted to do for a while ever since the takedowns have come out and my general purpose and goal for this is just to kind of do uh, a general survival rifle. So uh, kind of do all 1022, that's small, compact, yet accurate. Um, and I'm able to, you know, do a little bit of varmint hunting with it as well. That, you know, providing your own food is, is some part of survival. So varmint hunting is definitely a consideration there. So anyway, not to give too much away because I'm gonna do a, a whole little series on this guy as we kind of get it built and it's going to change a lot from the way it looks now but give you a rundown on my qualifications to this guy how i ended up on this exact model and i will put the exact model and more information uh, in the description below there so i wanted a few things uh one being the stainless barrel in action for uh, uh durability reasons corrosion resistance stuff like that um, obviously we have that so check that off i also wanted the uh, threaded version this one I was thinking was coming with a thread protector, but it came with a muzzle device, so I'll yank that off here uh, later. But I also wanted the shortest barrel possible. I think the shortest they go is like 16 point, is there 16.4 or 16.6 inches? So, and that's what that's what this is. Most of the threaded takedown 1022s are that length. So that's what this guy is. And I, I obviously wanted a takedown. Uh, and I also wanted uh, a synthetic stock. So as you can tell here, this is actually not a synthetic stock. This is their like wood wood laminate. So I'm gonna be swapping this guy out with something else. And my logic there is with survival rifle, again, I want this thing to be as light as possible and at the same time be durable. So I don't want the wood stock soaking up humidity and moisture and it having any type of effect on on anything really. So um, I'm gonna swap out to synthetic and get this guy Cerakoted. So um, curious to know the weight differences between the synthetic and the wood because I've heard some varying opinions on what actually weighs more. Um, but the last thing I wanted was uh, fixed irons. And these are gonna more or less be kind of a backup redundancy thing, but I did want these. And I wanted the non-fiber optic version. So I believe the, uh, I just believe the, the standard beads are a little bit more durable than the fiber optic inserts so i wanted the non-fiber and these sites are supposedly on the takedown a little bit taller so that way you can see over a suppressor when it's mounted up here so spoiler alert there um we're definitely gonna be mounting up a suppressor to this guy and playing with probably a good handful to see exactly which one i really like on this setup and then going from there so that's a quick rundown on this guy um, i'm gonna get the stock replaced um, get it sent off to Michael at Controlled Chaos Arms. And I'm thinking we're going to do some type of maybe cryptic uh, Cerakote. If you guys got any ideas or something you think would look cool, um, give me a holler. Put something down in the description there on what you think this would look good. There's there's a, a, a few different 1022 takedowns out there who have done some Cerakoting and similar survival rifle projects. Mine's not going to be entirely, entirely like theirs, um, 
but it should be should be fun and um, that'll be a little bit different a little unique so um, I think the last thing is the optic and I already have an optic here you probably saw us on social media too if you follow us but this is the primary arms ACSS 6x fixed power uh, 22 long rifle and bring the box here it is the uh, all their stuff uh, all the ACSS stuff is BDC so this should be fun uh, 0 at 50 and you get holds out to 200 with wind and then you've got your range estimation here as well as here uh, to do both um, you know your kind of target plinking stuff and as well as your varmint and pest control so again I'm anxious to see how this guy works uh, the, the primary arms uh, ACSS stuff uh, is awesome I love it you guys know that I think already probably um, the big draw to me personally to the primary arm stuff is not necessarily the scopes but uh, the reticles especially the ACSS stuff um, the the ACSS is has a ton of stuff built into it and honestly uh, when it comes to a BDC if you have to have a BDC reticle I, I think they're extremely hard to beat especially in the price range um, and I would say that uh, any uh, any other manufacturers making BDC reticle uh, optics again, especially in that price range, um, you really got to step up your game, like seriously, because um, the functionality within the ACSS just blows everybody out of the water completely. So excited to mount this guy up, and I think it'll fit pretty flush towards the end here, so we shouldn't be adding any length. I think that'll probably mount up well right there, so we can still fit it in the case if needed, but. I'm going to get some rings ordered, um, probably a stock ordered. I'll put some more uh, links and descriptions down in the uh, description, or links and stuff down in the description box if you're curious to know what I've got in mind for getting ordered for this guy. Uh, and then be on the lookout for some videos, uh, again, coming up here soon. I'm, I'm excited to get this project rolling. And I'm probably going to talk about a few things, like I said, suppressors. Um, I'm curious to also know how well the return to zero is. Um, I've already pre-adjusted this tensioner so it's not going on like real easy and real loose so I've got to put a little bit of torque on it you probably can't tell but there's some it's, it's fitting nice and snug um, and then just push up on the bottom and then twist and you can tell right there there's it's fitting nice and snug so uh, I think tightening that up and getting some tension on there is gonna definitely help the return to zero but that's one of the things I want to test as well so if you guys get questions uh, put that stuff down below and again, we'll get you some more updates soon. So obviously I'm pretty pumped. So this is something I've been wanting to do for the, the longest time and I'm really excited to see how it turns out. So check you guys later.